You guys ready for your next slammer? We got a great group tonight. Our next slammer is the president of Rubin Communications Group, a public relations and marketing firm in Virginia Beach. He was a reporter for Wavy TV from 76 to 91 and host of On the Record, WBC TV from 92 to 2008. Give it up for Mr. Joel Rubin. Intimidating. This is, I mean, I cannot believe the crowd that's out here tonight. Uh, I, I have clients out here, ex clients out here, I, I'm, I'm, and I'm sick. I have a bad cold, but I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to share a story with you and my germs with the people in Theater B. Well, listen, as uh, Vince said, um, I was a reporter for a long time, and then for Almost 17 years, I was host of a show on Channel 13 called On the Record. I know you all used to watch it. I, I, I competed against God every week. And God got a six share, and I got like a 1.5. But um, it was a great show. And, and you know, over 17 years, I must have done 800 shows. You know, every Friday, we taped the show, and it aired on sun, Sunday morning. But there was one in particular that really stood out, and it was in 2005. And the way, uh, any of y'all ever been to Channel 13 before? Some of you have. Okay, there's a little lobby out there, right there on, on Woodis Avenue. And I'm standing there um, in the lobby uh, waiting for one of my guests to show up. And actually, the guy that was going to show up, and actually was in the first segment of the show, was a former gangbanger from, from L.A. who told the most amazing story. But that's the story for another time. But as I'm standing there waiting for this guy uh, to show up, and I should back up a second. The other segment of the show was going to be about Hurricane Katrina. Now, Hurricane Katrina was in 2005. We had a reporter in Channel 13 named Wayne Carter. You might have remembered that name. Wayne was from New Orleans, and uh, Hurricane Katrina hits, and he goes down to New Orleans to take care of his family and also to do some stories while he was down there. So he's coming back from New Orleans, and I knew he was coming back, and he was coming back on a Thursday, and I called him and said, Wayne, I want you to be on my show on Friday morning to talk about your experience down there with Hurricane Katrina. And you know Hurricane Katrina was about the worst hurricane that's ever happened in this country. I just looked up some facts about it. 1,833 people died during Hurricane Katrina. 1,577 of them in Louisiana alone. So it was, you know, obviously devastating. So as I'm standing there, you know, waiting for this other guest to show up, there's an entertainer in town named Eddie Sal. Have you ever heard of Eddie Sal? Okay, Eddie's a great guy. So I'm standing there in the lobby, and all of a sudden, from behind me, Eddie Sal walks right past me. And I look, I say, and he's walking out of the lobby, Woodis Avenue, right across the street is the American Red Cross building, right? So I said, Eddie, what are you doing here? He says, well, I just brought my parents back from New Orleans, and they're over at the Red Cross building. I said, well, I'm about to do a, a segment on my show about Hurricane Katrina. Why don't you just come on my show and talk about what happened with your parents during Hurricane Katrina? He didn't tell me, I didn't have any time to get any details. I didn't know what the heck happened with his parents. I just said, come on the set and talk about what happened with your parents. Okay. So we finished the second with the gangbanger, and then Wayne Carter and Eddie Sal sit down. And here's the story that, that Eddie Sal told. Hurricane Katrina is coming up the Gulf of Mexico, right? And it's a category three or four hurricane at this point. His father, his stepfather and mother, are living down in one of those poor sections of New Orleans, and his sister lives down there too. And, the, and Eddie is talking to them and saying, get the hell out of New Orleans. You know, they're evacuating everybody, get the hell out. And his sister's down there, and she says, I'm leaving New Orleans too. And, but the parents, and this probably would happen around here if we had a hurricane, said, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. We've had these scares before, it's not going to happen. Now, Eddie's mother is, has diabetes, she's overweight and sick. His stepfather, has a steel rod in his leg, has just had open heart surgery six weeks earlier. He's also overweight, not in good shape. So the sister leaves and drives to Houston, I guess, where everybody else was doing. The parents stay in the house. 
57 levees break, of course, in what's considered the greatest engineering catastrophe in the history of this country. And they wake up the next morning and their bed on the second floor is floating, okay? Floating in the house. Now they had rented out a room up in the attic. So there's some people actually the next level up. And so they climb up into the attic, right? And they're up there and they're for two days, they're eating tuna fish and just basically watching what's going on outside. The water goes down and then they come down the steps to the first floor. They open the door and the water sucks both of them out into the street. Okay, now, by the way, I'm sitting on the set here. I haven't answer, asked one question other than what happened. Okay, so I'm sitting there just like, go on. You know, I'm like, this is unbelievable. So they're sucked out into the street and they're holding on for dear life to whatever they could hold on to. And one of those, remember the, all those scenes of the boats coming up the, the streets? One comes along, grabs them, puts them in one of those boats, and takes them to the stinking Superdome, which is where 40,000 people in the New Orleans area ended up as a result of Hurricane Katrina. And they had barely any power in there. I don't even want to go into what I've heard about what was going on in the Superdome. But anyway, they get into the Superdome. Now, in the meantime, Eddie Sal has heard nothing from his parents. Nothing. He doesn't know what he thinks, doesn't know if they're alive or dead. Like I said, 1,600 people died in New Orleans. He knows nothing. He's back here in Virginia Beach, scared. So, his, his, they, while they're in the Superdome for seven or eight hours, finally a doctor sees his stepfather and sees this big incision right down his chest. He says, sir, did you have heart surgery? Yes, I did. So they take the father and the stepmother and they get them to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That's where they were evacuating people who were, who were very ill. And they took them to uh, LSU, I think, had a triage center set up, and finally they got them over to this rehab hospital in Baton Rouge. And then, finally, they were able to call Eddie back in uh, uh, Virginia Beach. So they call Eddie, and Eddie says, I'm coming to get you. I'm gonna come and get you and bring you to Virginia Beach. Well, unfortunately, if you just had heart surgery, you have to have a note from your doctor before they'll let you on a plane, okay? So he says, I'm just gonna go down there, I'm gonna get my parents, I'm gonna bring them back, I'm gonna figure it out once I get down there. Even though I know I need to, know, how am I gonna get a note from the doctor? This surgery happened in New Orleans, New Orleans is underwater, okay? So he flies down to, Baton Rouge, gets off the plane, tries to rent a car, there's no cars to be rented, you know, they've all been taken, so he goes out to the curb and he's gonna get into a cab and go to this rehab hospital. Now there's one other guy standing on the curb who's also waiting, and he's, he's got long hair and he's in shorts, and anyway, they decide to share the cab. So they get in the cab and Eddie says, make small talk, Hi, I'm, I'm Eddie Sal. Who are you? Uh, I'm Dr. I'm, I'm Paul Perino. What do you do? I'm a cardiologist. Really? Where are you a cardiologist? At Oshner Medical Center in New Orleans. That's funny. Six weeks ago, my father just had heart surgery. My father-in-law is Ruben Aguilera. That's funny. I'm the guy that operated on him. So. Now what he had to do was get a note. Now he had picked up, he had picked up a card, uh, a card to thank all the volunteers at this um, rehab center in, in Baton Rouge. He, and instead he took the card and gave it to the doctor. And here's what the, here it is, here's a copy of the note. Mr. Aguilera was my patient for heart surgery roughly six weeks ago. From a heart surgery standpoint, he is safe to travel by air, signed Dr. Paul Perino. Got him on the plane, brought him back, and the parents were sitting there at the Red Cross building in Norfolk. That's why Eddie Sal was over at Channel 13 that morning. I'm sitting there dumbfounded while we're telling the story on the air. The father, the mo his mother has passed away since, it's been 10 years. Father-in-law is still, he now is living down in Texas. Now, Eddie was gonna be here tonight, but he had to drive his mother-in-law down to New Orleans and guess what's going on in New Orleans right now? Mardi Gras, that's where Eddie Sal is. Thank you very much.